What's up, fam? Hey, thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. Question. Why is it that my people are always so gullible, so happy for tokens, <clears throat> for dangling carrots. And how come it's like, it seems like that we don't see a lot of, well, I ain't gonna say all of us, but a lot of our people do not see what's being done right in our face. That And it happens all the time, every time, on time. It's about to be midterms. It's, well, we're in the middle of midterms right now. And so now, these uh, politicians and the powers that be are doing everything they can to appease us, to make us feel good. Uh, pretty much trying to get us to get out there and vote, right? So, let's say like you got the, what is it, the senator, whatever lady, what's her name? Mac, if I got her first name. You know, get out there and twerking on, on the beach, right? Midterms. Now she want to complain that people are coming after her and attacking her because she's, you know, expressing herself and all that kind of way. But you could express yourself anyway, you know. Could have showed yourself fishing, could have showed yourself swimming, could have showed yourself, you know, playing volleyball on the beach, something. But you know, you want to get out there and twerk upside down and tell people to vote for you. So, so you did it for a reason. You did it to get attention. But then you don't like, but you want to pick and choose the type of attention you want to get. It's kind of like when, let me just say, like when women get out go out and you dress in let's say quote unquote provocative clothing you know where you know, your cleavage is out your clothes are tight or your skirt is real short or what have you and you know you're going to draw attention you know you're going to draw eyes but if you get this one guy who runs up to you all up on you trying to touch on you rub on you trying to talk to you and everything and then you don't want to give him no play you know he's in your personal space you want to get mad and then if he do something stupid like cuss you out or want to you know put hands on you not saying it's your fault but what i'm saying is you can't control you can't control what other people do what, I, what i'm getting at but then you want to get upset because that wasn't the type of attention that you actually want right but anyway i'm getting off topic let's get back on topic so one well, the point of this story i'm getting to is the powers that be them folk love to do stuff quote unquote do stuff for us to make us feel good but don't want to do anything that's going to actually help the community as a whole to help how do you say close the wealth gap to help us uh, be more to help more of us become homeowners uh help us become more educated at a lower cost without these high ass uh, high, uh, college bills or even putting better schools in the neighborhood you know teachers that actually care about the kids making sure the ratio of student teacher is you know like 1 to 8 instead of like 1 to 38 they don't do stuff like that you know what they do they take an old dog on me Ku, Ku Klux Klan building and want to turn it into an arts building. And that's a story, and that's part of the story I'm gonna get to today. So, like I say, they try to give us these, like I say, these, these little trinkets that mean nothing. No reparations, like I said, no land, like I say, no free education, a freaking building that's really, in my standpoint, you know, is there to remind us that, hey, don't forget how it used to be. Don't forget who run this world. Although we want to get the word slavery out of school and bring in involuntary relocation because we don't want our kids to feel bad about what we did and our ancestors did to your people. We don't want our kids to remember, but we show sure, damn sure want you to remember. So I'm gonna get into the story. This is from CNN. Now you can get this from like 
pretty much a a bunch of websites, news sites. And the story's been around probably sometime last year is like when it first came into the news, but now I guess it's a big deal because I guess they're doing, you know, they're, they're starting to move forward and actually, you know, making progress. But it says, the KKK once gathered at this Texas site. Decades later, it's become a racial justice center named after a black man who was lynched. Probably was lynched in that building. Let's read a little bit, a little bit of this. <sighs> Is it possible to create an impactful center for healing from a former site of white supremacy? I'm going to say no, but we're going to see what they say. For a nonprofit based in Fort Worth, Texas, the answer is yes. Really? Uh, founded in 2019, it said this uh, building is attempting to perform a bitter alchemy. Instead of raising a former Ku Klux Klan hall, the organization is converting it into a cultural hub and arts center. The new structure will direct resources toward groups previously targeted by the Klan, including Black, Hispanic, Jewish, Catholic and LGBTQ communities. Now, oh, I can go along a lot of places. It's, it's, they always gonna try to include us with everybody. You take something that was pretty much, these people were pretty much the majority, 99.9% of their efforts were put toward killing, scaring, hanging, lynching, you know, terrifying, keeping Aboriginal black people in their place. That was their number one goal. If other people just came along and got in the way, then you did mostly like Jewish and Catholic, mostly because you were probably doing stuff for our community and they pretty much, you know, gonna, gonna take care of you. LGBTQ back in the day, I don't think they really knew who they was, but you got flat born people. So, Hey, I can't say too much about that. Almost a century ago, the site was an edifice dedicated to hate. In the next couple of years, it'll become a space for under, under underserved young adults and exhibitions centered on civil rights, among other things. Or think of it like this, the reimagined area will offer a necessary and joyous haven for those U.S. society has long kept on the fringes and will be named after Fred Rouse, a black man who in 1921 was lynched nearby following a union dispute quote i don't think there could be another project that would be more meaningful 95 year old opal lee found out dr opal lee is that the same woman who fought the juneteenth walk hmm. lee, a founder member of the transform 10 12 board told cnn lee's work with the nonprofit harmonizing harmonizes with her lifelong commitment to racial justice the activists, yep, spent decades campaigning for Juneteenth to become a federally recognized holiday. They loved it so much, they put it in the Cadillac and said, hey, we're going to give this away your name. Okay. Her efforts paid off in 2021 when President Joe Biden signed legislation establishing June 19th as Juneteenth, National Independence Day. So Joe Biden signed that in the legislation. But again, the George Floyd bill is still a bunch of crap. The promise to talk to Ice Cube once you got in the office for the plan for black America never happened. And it was somebody else who said that he promised to talk to black farmers, black farmers in the, in this country. He promised them that he would talk to them once he got in the office. And that still hasn't happened. They've done a lot of stuff for a lot of other people. Well, like no question, but for some reason, I just want to know if somebody give me a legit reason, I don't care. Don't give me an answer, well, that's gonna make people mad. Some people ain't gonna like it. No, because you do stuff that make us mad and you don't care. You know it's gonna make us mad because we gonna, because every time it happens, we like, damn, you know, what's up with us? What about us? So I wanna know a legit reason why you feel reparations is not old, not just studied, but old. Why you feel that a anti black hate crime bill should be putting the legislation in pass when studies show that we're the most the, the most hate crimes are committed against you know aboriginal black americans i just want a legitimate like what's it say pen the paper show me the numbers show me the statistics of why you feel that you shouldn't you know you, we shouldn't get the same 
separately like everybody else get what they get separately. That's all. I mean, just, you know, just, just, just be honest. But, uh, you know, just be honest. And say revisiting the past close to 100 years ago on 1012 North Main Street, uh, then 106, well, 1006 North Main Street was a location of Ku Klux Klan Clavering. What the hell? What did they learn how to spell? Number 101 Auditorium opened in 1924. The building was destroyed by fire, but swiftly, swiftly restored in 1925. The 22,000 square foot hall could hold some 2,000 people. And it was designed to be a space where the Clavern, a local unit of the Klan, could practice marches and perform minstrel shows. 2,000 people. Imagine that. A building of 2,000 people, racist as hell, gathering legally, but people knowing without nobody even, you know, bothering them or come, you know, interfering in their activities. Now, this was about 100 years ago. Can you imagine how many people? that created if you got 2,000 people let's just say 2,000 people created everybody let's say it was a thousand women thousand men and they all were couples and they created children let's say they created one child that's another thousand kids you create now you went from 2,000 to 3,000 and let's say them kids got together and created kids you know you make another 500 but the point is you're, you're multiplying you're creating more of what is already out there, but people want to try to say racism, you know, ended when, well, they tried to say racism ended when Obama became president. We're looking at everybody like, are you serious? You know what I'm saying? But then when Donald Trump came all of a sudden, oh man, now everybody became racist again. No, them people just never stopped being racist. Uh, I don't know what they ain't talking about. It seemed like there was more racist when, when, when Obama was president. But anyway, they said the auditorium was designed for another purpose too, to terrorize. At the time, Fort Worth had a large number of Klan members and the auditorium became the Klan's headquarters in Texas. The tower and building was meant to strike fear with black, Hispanic, and other marginalized, what did they have Hispanic people in 1900? But anyway, marginalized residents passing through the city center. It's worth remembering that it was, that this was as a historian, Linda Gordon laid out in a 2017 book, The Era of the Second Klan, when the group's members Jettison the more covert vigilantism of the past and worked in the open, taking aim at a variety of supposed enemies. They said over the decades, the building, they say, oh, hold on. Most important in the 1920s, Klan's program was embraced by millions who were not members, possibly even a majority of Americans. Again, this country was built on racism. Racism still exists, and racism is not going anywhere. Over the decades, the buildings were repurposed for a number of times. For instance, 1927, it was sold to the Leonard Brothers Department Store, and by 1929, it was a dance venue. In 1946, the Ellis Pelican Company secured it as a warehouse. And you can go on and on and on. Y'all can read the story yourself. But my, what, the point I want to get to is this. This is symbolism. And symbolism is useless. I I can't for the life of me understand why we as a people would want to go into a building that I don't care if it was a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. Want to go into a building and it's I'll say it's one thing to be a museum. But I would still say it need to be torn down and you can build a new building. But want to go into a building that has a history, so many spirits. There's no telling how many dead brothers and sisters. They probably had lynches inside the building. I'm quite sure. And killings of black people that we don't know of. Probably a lot of black people disappeared. Probably buried under that building. Probably why they won't raise it. But I can't see how we would want to congregate inside of a building that was meant for hate toward us. You know, I, I, I went to Memphis last couple years ago and went to the Lorraine Motel and then to the museum across the street. Went to the museum across the street and they have an e exhibit where it's like they're showing like what it was like at the bottom of a slave ship. And when I saw this thing, 
I mean, what did, how do you say chills down your spine? I mean, it's a feeling that came over to me that to where I actually was sad, wanted to cry, was upset, mad, just looking at it. And this was just, this, these weren't like real people. This was just a, just a display of like, you know, uh, you know, like, 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 car, like carvings, you know, like, like just statues or whatever. And I got to the point, like I said, I was upset. I was hurt. I knew what I wanted to do. You no, know, got the feeling, got the upset feeling. And I was ready to go ready to get out here in this world and do what I need to do to make sure that doesn't happen again. Now you do need things that do remind you of history because you don't want, want it to be repeated. But I don't think I could go to that museum every year or once a month or whatever. I think going once was enough. I took pictures. That's fine. Everything else in that museum didn't really hit me, but that one display, of the slave of of a slave sitting at the bottom quote unquote bottom of a boat, he did it for me. Like I said, I, I don't I wouldn't I don't want to go back and see that museum again. But they created that for us. I don't think they create this stuff for us, for us to look and, and admire. I think, I think they create this stuff for us for us to remember how it was and how it can be. I believe that's how they think in the back of their mind. So go across the street to the Lorraine Motel where uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, or shot, you know, shot, you know, assassinated, or the attempt of his life was, and then ended in the hospital. And speaking of hospitals, we'll get to another story about the hospitals. You know, and then you go in there, you look at the room he sat in, you look at the balcony he stood on, stuff like that. This motel is like a museum. You can't sleep there no more, but they kept it as a museum. And I'm wondering like, why? Now looking on, I'm like, why did they really you know, leave this for us to see? Again, you want to keep things to, so you can remind, you know, to remind you of the past somewhat, but not necessarily the actual place. Cause truthfully, I feel that the Lorraine Motel should have been taught, should be taught out. And then you can build a monument there if you want to. But they had an actual building of where the murder of a prominent black leader happened, to me is, is crazy. It's, it's somewhat sickening. You realize that they keep up, they have all these Confederate statues, with these Confederate generals that lost in the war. And you know in the Bible, scriptures speak of how the most high when 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 people are in battle in war and he is you know they're doing his bidding he instructs them to destroy everything in that city every city that you go to when you that you conquer you destroy you kill everything everything living you don't take any uh uh, uh trophies or nothing you destroy it you burn it and you keep walking and you don't leave any of your enemies <clears throat> alive. Why is that? Because corruption can happen. Uh, you leave some of your enemies alive, they're gonna have children that's gonna, you know, and, and, and offspring, and they're gonna tell the story of what happened to their ancestors. And then once that community grows again and multiplies, they're gonna come back and they're gonna come get you, which is what happened in one of the stories in the scriptures. I can't remember right off the top, but look it up google it. you know that's what happened you don't take everything you destroy it so but not this country you know i don't i, I don't know of a holocaust museum then you got like the concentration camps i think those things like in germany or i like they're abandoned if they're still there at all a lot of them like abandoned i don't think there's a museum with concentra or the concentration camps where actually jewish people go in visits all the time. They may go to a monument or a memorial or something that was built for them, but the old buildings, them things is gone. But for us black folks here in this country, they want us to remember everything that happened to us in the past and do not want you to forget it. So they don't tear down anything that has to deal with us. They're going to keep them shits up. But for them folks, where a tragedy happened. They're gonna turn it down. And that brings us to Parkland Hospital in Dallas. 
because the story came out today. Now I've been sitting on this story about this KKK building for a couple of minutes, but when I saw this story today about Parkland Hospital coming down and like the title was, uh, they were saying that, let's see, the title says the hospital where JFK died is coming down. Dallas does not want to be remembered as the city that killed the president. They said this for years. They said it, it hurt the city for a long time. And they don't like people to be reminded that that's where the tra that's where this tragedy happened. But amazingly, with all of the thousands and thousands upon thousands of babies that were born in this hospital, now they built a new park. Let me get them to say that. They did build a new hospital. They built a new park uh, a few years back. You know, uh, and so now that they're, they're breaking it down and they're, and they're, and they're uh, I mean, they're turning, you know, they piece by piece, they're turning it down. And, and they do, and I know they do this because it's, uh, it's a hospital out in the town I stayed in. It's been empty for like 10 years because they built a new one. And so they finally tore it down maybe a couple of months back. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the hospitals that's, that was connected to Parkland back in the day, because I worked at both Parkland and St. Paul. St. Paul, they built a new hospital, you know, uh, what's that, the uh, Bill Clements Building Hospital, and they tore down St. Paul a few years back. This, I understand. I mean, they do it, but they're going to build, you know, they're going to use that, you see what I'm saying, and they're going to build, uh, they build other buildings, office buildings, somewhere, but they, if, they, if it's prime real estate, they're going to do something to make some money. They're going to they're gonna tear it down. They didn't keep it up. They're going to tear it down, build something else. That's what they that's what they do, you know, with hospitals, I understand that. But it's amazing, like I said, this is where JFK died. The emergency room that he died in. They they say tear it down. They're not gonna keep it, you know, they're not gonna keep this part of the building as a memorial to the death of, let's just say, the white president in Dallas. No, they're gonna tear this whole thing down and I guarantee they're gonna build either. Uh, multi-level housing, I mean, multi-family units, uh, some kind of, uh, maybe some office buildings, some some uh, medical buildings or whatever, but they're not like I say, they're, they're going to tear this down. Because Dallas don't want to be reminded of what happened visually, what happened to the President of the United States, the leader of the free world. Out of sight, out of mind. But like, like I say, they'll do that for them, but for us, they're going to keep the living reminder of stuff that done happened to us. I am glad that even if there, if you believe that, the, that that slave ships came over from Africa or not, let's just say that they did. I am glad that they never found a slave ship anywhere in this country, on any shores or anywhere. Because best believe, if they did, I guarantee you they will find some way to restore it and create a museum so you can go in there and see what a slave ship looks like. Again, not for healing, but to remind you of what it used to be and what it can be. Let's see, Texas, the Alamo. The Alamo is still up. This is a place, like I said, this country is good at keeping up stuff that where they lost, but try to make it seem like something great. They kept the Alamo up. <clears throat> this is where uh, <clears throat> all these soldiers, Stephen F. Austin, I think Sam Houston, them kept uh, Daniel Boone, I guess, some folks, you know, lost to them, you know, got beat by the Mexicans. But right after that, they went and like, they keep it up so that way they can go and say, hey, that happened, but this happened too. This what happened right after that battle, we went and found Santa Ana and we captured him and you know, and that's how we won the Texas American War. Texas not Texas, Texas Mexican American American Mexican War, something like that. Whatever. So everything is done. I'm telling you, see, everything is done. Everything is calculated. Thought out thoroughly and calculated. Uh but the way we think like with this building is, it's kind of how like we use the N word. How we say, we take a word that's derogatory, that really has no meaning. And like Brother Nitty Fully said, it's probably why we don't like, we hate it so much is because 
it really doesn't have a meaning. We don't know. It just say it just it just like see look in the dictionary say a derogatory term used toward us, but it's like what does it mean? Like where did it come from? Except meaning the word black, like Negro. But anyway, took it. But we tried, we said we're gonna take the word and we're gonna flip it and we're gonna make it as a term of endearment. But really, think about it. How many times do you use that word as a term for endearment? Usually you using it to describe somebody, like seriously. If you don't believe me, every time you use it, you know, substitute it for the word king or substitute for the word queen or brother or sister and see how it sounds. See if it has the same impact because if you mad at somebody, you're going to call them the N-word in a minute. But you're not gonna call him a brother. Say, man, I'ma kill that brother. I'ma kill that king. You ain't gonna say that. Or forget that brother. Or forget that king. You see what I'm saying? But you'll say forget that N-word real quick. You know, so like I say, the majority of your time, majority of the time, really, you when you use that word, you're only you you using it to be derogatory towards somebody. I mean, serious. Let's just be serious. But like I said, it's like us, you know, so we're gonna take that word and make it something positive. It's kind of like how they did this building. We're going to take something that's the rock that, that that's went against us and bad for us. And we're going to take that word. We're going to take that building. And we're going to turn it something positive, but really the memories, there are no memories of this building that are positive. No matter what you can turn to an art, you can turn to an art museum, art exhibit building for, you know, LGBTQ people, black Mexicans, everybody else, you know what I'm saying? It ain't who ain't, who probably ain't seen the inside of the bill, probably didn't know it exists. I'm sure all the black people knew it exists, but these folks didn't know it exists. And call it what you want and go with it, you know what I'm saying, and believe, you know, and believe that book on But my thing is, I mean, bottom line, I think you need to tear the building down. As you tear it down, start over, build a brand new building. If you really want to heal, make help black folks heal, tear it down. And then make a little plaque, make a little plaque, you know, in front of the, in front of the building, you know, and say, hey, uh, here used to be a building for, you know, used to be a building here, Ku Klux Klan building about a hundred years ago that, you know, there's a lot of lynchings, a lot of evil stuff going on here. But now we tore that, we tore that monstrosity down and we have created a beautiful building for, for the ancestors of the people who like, who were, who were, done wrong, who were, you know, violated, planned, plotted, strategized against in the community. And we're gonna, when we build something beautiful for you guys, you can have this land, do whatever you want with it. That's what should be done. Not this bull corn here. But anyway, tell me what you think. Am I off? Am I wrong? Leave your comments below and then share it with the world. And with that being said, I leave you in peace. And I'll see you on the other side.